question. So one person in the group suggested doing a birdhouse and a bird. Are you all good with that? Yes. Okay. So what we're fine. I'm a, I am a true beginner. Okay, so I'm going to do a very, very slow, step-by-step, two-point perspective walkthrough of this birdhouse. And it's okay if you're a beginner. I'm, I'm going to operate at the speed that I would for some of my elementary school students. So, and, and, the, and the difficulty level. And then as we do more of it, I'll, I'll build on more levels for people who feel comfortable. But this, I'm going to begin in a very, very simple level. Okay. So here we go. So two point perspective, you have two vanishing points. Let's do it kind of in the middle of your paper. Like so, make it darker. There's vanishing point one, there's vanishing point two. You don't really have to draw the eye level line through them. You can, but you don't have to. It's just like understood that it's there. When we did one point, we drew the eye level line. Now we can choose to do a box, uh, I mean a birdhouse kind of at eye level line, which I think that's what we're going to do. Um, let's see, I'm gonna start with a vertical line, just an up and down line. Half of this up and down line is above the vanishing point and half of it's below the vanishing point. So make it thicker so I can see it easier. I'm just drawing a plain old, that's a little squiggly, sorry about that. A plain old up and down line, part of it's above my vanishing point and part of it's below my vanishing point. It doesn't even have to be half and half. It'll be whatever amounts you want. But for the sake of doing something similar, I actually have more below my vanishing point of the line and less above. Okay, next step. I'm gonna lightly connect, because part of this I'll erase later. Everything I say lightly, I'm just gonna say lightly. I'm gonna draw it darker though so you can see it. I'm gonna connect the top of this line to my left vanishing point. So I have a dot, a dot, a line, connecting the top of the line to the dot on the left. Now I'm going to connect that same area at the top of that line to the right vanishing point. And it has to connect straight. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the bottom of that vertical line we drew and connect to the vanishing point, like so. And then same thing on the bottom, I'm gonna to connect to the right-hand vanishing point, like so. so. So it's like a weird looking diamond or a kite right now. I'm going to draw a vertical line to the left of the vertical center line. It's not that far a distance apart, like this. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, but make it a little bit further over. So this section is wider, it's fatter, like this. The next thing I'm going to do is erase the connector lines. So the lines that connect to the dot that are outside this cube-like form we've made. So I'm going to erase these. These, and then I'll see if I can backtrack on the iPad and show you the whole process 
just this far from beginning to end before we do any more. Okay, here we go. Let's see if it'll let me back up and go forward. Backing up. Okay, now I'm going to do the whole thing forward again. We have a dot. We have a dot. Step one. Step two. Step three. Step four. Step five. Step six. Step seven. Erasing connector lines. Okay, that's what we have so far. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line from the dot on the right a little bit below this horizontal line here. But we're drawing it from the vanishing point again. So I'm going from the vanishing point like so. And I'm going to stop just short of the vertical. Let me erase a little bit more than that. And now I'm going to add two more vanishing points. Actually, no, maybe I should not. Well, but I'm going to break it down easier. Let's not add two vanishing points. Let's do something a little different. This one goes. Yeah, I need to do that to make this work. Okay. We're going to add a vanishing point down here, bottom left hand corner. And a vanishing point down here, bottom right hand corner. We're also going to add a vanishing point up here, top left hand corner, and up here, top right hand corner. So it's really multi point perspective. It starts out as two point perspective. So we have one, two, three dots, one, two, three dots. Two in the center, two above, two below. The next thing we're going to do is draw a line from, let's see, we want to have to go up like that. Let me think about how, we, yeah, I mean, that part of it goes down that way. Okay, we're going to draw a line from the center dot up like this. It's like a letter V. <clears throat> okay. 
right here from this area right here on this line right here this second high line we're going to draw a line to the top left vanishing point up here and i'll go backwards and forwards on those few steps too Backwards. Now slowly forward. Okay. Next, we're going to draw a line from this upper line that I'm pointing to right now, from the corner of it up to the top left vanishing point. easiest step for you. Okay, now we're going to go from this bottom left vanishing point, and we're going to intersect this corner with it. That's bad. Let's try it again. Go away. Ignore that last line. I have to make it better. I'm having trouble going backwards, so I'm going to erase it. Okay. Let's just make a line here to make it easier. You don't necessarily have to line it up. Just connect this to that. And you can make another line parallel to it, like here. Mm. Then from this fat parallel line here, you don't have to make it fat, you just made it for emphasis. I'm going to go back to the vanishing point on the right. And I'm going to do it from the parallel line right above it too. This line here is going to go from the bottom right vanishing point. And I'm going to erase some things so it's not confusing and I'll hopefully <laughs> I'll go back and do the steps again. Oh, look at that being so thick like that. That's thicker. Okay. this and I'm not sure erase that put that there okay I'm going to go backwards and forwards again ok 
And I'm going to go forwards from here. Step was adding the dot. 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 Step was drawing from this vanishing point up like that. Okay. Oops. Okay. Now let's just do it like that would be easier, I think. Do that. No. Let's try something a little different. Let's go. This okay. This. this comes from this vanish point down here for this part of the roof. Wait a second, that's not right. Okay, this. Come on, go for it for me. It's just here. Okay. To make it easier on you, let's just forget vanishing your points for this part. Just make a letter V here and make this line connect. That would be easier. So we did straight line, straight line, straight line, to the center point, to the center point, to the center point, to the center point. Vertical, vertical, vertical. Now we went from the bottom vanishing point like this, the upper vanishing point like this, and then we just did a part of a triangle here. Boom, boom, the top parts of the triangle. I'm gonna go here. Bring this here. You want to be honest with you, I kind of forgot how to do that part. I'm messing you up. Just ignore what I just said. I'm sorry. It's been a while since I've done two point. Okay. Not being very helpful there. Let's At this part, let's write that part. Okay, this might be easier. Here, this is going to be an easier way to show the same thing. Go ahead and from this thing, draw a triangle here. That's easier, way easier. So go back to our very beginning where we did the first box connected to the point, connected to the point, and just draw a triangle here. Sorry about that, guys. I don't know what to erase. Oh. <laughs> <Me either. laughs> uh, I'm kind of lost. <laughs> maybe start over from the beginning. I flip your paper over. All right, I have an easier way to teach it, and this is my fault. Um. I'm going to start over too. Let's get rid of this thing. Clear. Clear. Totally. They have an easier way to show you how to draw the same shape that's not so complex with all the, all the lines. Okay. We'll start over. I'm going to put a dot here.
And a dot here. I'm going to go up and down here, straight in the middle of the two lines. Take this to the point, this to the point, this to the point, this to the point. Or up and down here, and are up and down there. That part's pretty easy. The rest we're gonna not use the points because I think it's a little bit too confusing. Give you a second to get caught up to there. Okay, now we're just gonna see this little part right here and right here. Just gonna draw a triangle meeting in the middle. That's just easier. Straight, straight, wherever they intersect is where you end. Okay, now for this part here, we will take that to this point here. And then we're gonna draw an angle up like this here. Okay, that's much easier. Okay, I'm gonna show you all those steps again. I'm sorry I led you astray with a, just a really complex one. That's, that's a lot easier and it looks like the birdhouse. Okay, and we'll go backwards and show it again from step one. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna go all the way back to the beginning and show it again. Dot, dot. Vertical. Hopefully you're trying this on a different piece of paper than the first one we did. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, to the point on the left. To the point bottom on the left. To the point on the right. To the point on the right, an up and down line. Another up and down line over here. Then we did a line from up here, a line from up there, 
line down to this point. And then a slanted line here. Okay, then we can erase the connectors. Maybe I should leave those in for you guys. No. Is that easier? Are you guys getting this one? Feedback, please. I think so. But what are we erasing? You said we're erasing a connector. Yeah, I haven't shown you that yet. Oh, okay. But so, so far, is this easier? In that first mess I showed you? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Try to simplify some. Okay, now I'm going to erase the connectors. Those are the lines that go from outside the house to the vanishing point. So we just have the house kind of floating. Like that. Then somewhere in the middle of this left-hand side structure, we can put a circle or you can put a rectangle if a circle's, you know, too hard for you to draw or if you don't have a circle template or whatever. Computer's real easy to do it. That's more of a sideways oval. Doesn't have to be perfect. It could be however you want it to be. Can't see the bottom of it so much. Hmm. Is that better? No. Um, bottom like here? The lower, yeah, bottom right. Okay, let me get it up close to the screen. I'll just put the whole thing at the screen. Can you see it better now? Yes. Okay. So we're erasing that triangle that was at the bottom. Yeah, um, we're erasing the lines that went from here to here and from here to there. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Okay, so now this part, I'm just gonna put a circle. And so the birdie would go in to make it look even more like it's going in, like it's three dimensional. I'm gonna put a little curve here, like a backwards letter C. Can you see that? Yeah. I'll lift it up here in case you can't see that. So I did my circle oh, okay. and I did another little curve mm -hmm. in here and that makes it look more like it's going back in. Yeah. Okay. Now if we want it to look like it's on a pole, it's standing on a pole. Best way to be, to balance the pole, we'll put it like um, a vertical line here. It's a straight up and down line, it's kind of. Okay. 
a vertical line here and a vertical line here. There we go. So you would make need three lines down there, vertical lines to make it look like it's 3D and not just line, like it's a three-dimensional piece of wood. Excuse me. Because so let's say you want to just do a little basic bird like sitting on the roof like about here. First thing I would do is like do a little, lightly do a, like a little oval, a fat oval for whatever angle you want his body to be at. You can make it more vertical than that. Okay, go. That's gonna be his body. So. Now here's where you talk about doing, seeing the shapes and things. See the body as an oval. I'm going to see the head as an oval. Things are going to be real simplified. It's going to I can't see where to put the body. Um. Like that. Okay, here it is small so you can see the whole thing. Here it's big. The bottom of the bird or the bottom of the um, birdhouse? Yeah, if you could go small. Okay. I think I screwed up something. Can you see it now? I can see it. I'm just not sure mine's right. Oh, okay. Okay, back to the birdie. But right about here, we're going to put a vertical oval and it's going to be like an eyeball. It's almost in the middle of the circle, but not quite. Then we're going to draw like a curved triangle pointed downward like that for his beak.
And I'm going to do like half a circle here, half a letter C for his other eye, like it's in three quarter view. I'll show that step again. Whoops, sorry about that. Technical difficulty. Okay. And we're going to go and we're going to show some separation of, of feathers and areas, like from the breast to the wing and stuff like that. So do that. I'm going to curve down from here and I'm going to make like, I'm going to make this really big. So hopefully you can see, it. I don't have to hold up the iPad. I'm going to curve down from here and um, make a few little jagged edges. So I'm going to curve around. It's too fat. Curve around and then make it flare out a little bit and then do some little jacket edges. Then I can erase some of this thing. I don't know if I even like that angle. Let's try that again. Do a nicer one. There, that's a little cuter, I think. A little fluffier. And then I would erase this here. I can also erase this here too. So go backwards and do that again forwards. Now backwards, now forwards. And now I'm going to come down from this little part of that neck feather thing I did and curve it around this way. And go past the body and put a little triangle at the end. So I went from here, I went like this. like this and I'm going to erase this part and I'm going to put like a curve right here, like a stretched out letter U, right about here. And I'm going to put a little tail down here too. That can be straight, or if you make it go out and in a little bit. And then you could shade or color this part in to make it look different from the breast and the head and all that. I think I'll make mine bumpy up here. I think that would be cuter. A little bit more nicer like with this. Okay, marks to add texture. I think I'm going to do some little jagged edges here for variety and make it look a little bit more feathery and softer. 
and get rid of this thick line, make it thinner and add some more jagged stuff. Like so. And we're going to give him little feet that are kind of hanging over so it looks like he's sitting there. And to do this little claws hanging over, just make think about it like a curved triangle or a letter C that meets, curve it, skinny, and then gets wider as it goes out. And then I'm going to erase right here to make it look like it's sitting on there. So here's another little curved triangle. I'm going to erase it right about here to make it look like, you know, or connect it like his claws are holding on. Curved triangle. So he's curving around and holding on to it. Over here on this illustration I'm looking at, they just have this claw kind of sticking up and you can barely even see it. So this, I guess, is balancing this little claw here. I think I might mix some of that. Look like it's hanging over too in my drawing. Maybe put a little bit of another one over there on that side. Where now he looks like he's hanging on. So he's going, oh, he's hanging on. I'm going to put another claw up here too. Well, it looks like he's hanging on to me, anyway. Now, if I was going to do a watercolor like uh, of something like this, like um, Jackie was curious about, if there was something white, I want something I wanted to remain white, I would put tape on that or put rubber cement on that and let it dry first, and then do the watercolor background, like wet on wet, and then do a pencil drawing on top of that after dries and then do ink. Or you just start with the pencil. It doesn't really matter. You, know, you can start with the pencil, sketch everything out, then do the watercolor background and paint everything and ink on top. I, I suggest doing the ink on top because it just remains more, um, it looks more clean and fresh and crisp. It adds more detail. But you can experiment. You know, there's nothing that says you have to go in a certain order. That's why it's nice to have like a couple of your thingies or cards that you're going to play with and try different techniques on and try something first and then let it dry and try something after. And if you're bored letting things dry, you can use the hair dryer. That's what our uh, professor always did in college. She used a hair dryer if you want something to dry quicker in watercolor. If you did it in permanent marker first, you can watercolor around it and then go back over the permanent marker to make it more stark. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. I'm gonna put a little paint on there. You've inspired me. There's some paint in the background, watercolor paint with my iPad faking it. <laughs> Um, gosh, does anybody have interest in doing different types of birds with about a half hour, 40 minutes we have left? Or other animals like dogs or cats or, or what's the, what's the consensus? Something easy. <laughs> easy stuff. How about different types of birds? 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's try a cardinal. Are we meant to be seeing your iPad? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, oh, it's not there, I'm sorry. I knocked it, strange. I just put purple in the background. Oh, okay, thanks. Thank you. We'll start with a fresh sheet. And we're gonna do a cardinal. Let's see. So they have a pointy head. So I guess for, for a cardinal, I would start again. I'm I'm really big at starting with ovals or rectangles or whatever. That's how I was, I don't know, taught to do new things, things that you're not used to drawing, and it helps. It helps to do the basic shapes. So with this cardinal, I'm going to do like a long oval here. Let me get it on inking again. Whoops. And that's going to be his body later. I should make it thicker. I see it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I'm going to do a little oval this way. We are not later on. That'll be his head. That's just going to be the area which his head's going to be. Now I'm going to make the tuft that stands up from his head. So I'm going to just make a triangle shape right now. We'll, we'll, we'll refine it later. That's a bad triangle. I'm going to make a triangle here. That looks like somebody with a dunce cap on. And I'm going to make a curved triangle down here. Now I'm going to put his little mask on. There's a shape. It's going to come beneath the beak, and that's like a triangle too. I'll just color it in black. This is the beginning, believe it or not, the mask that goes underneath and then around. So there's a triangle. Then I'm going to do a curve, like a letter C, around where his beak is at the top of it, away from the tip, but at the top where it connects to the head. And from here, I'm going to do a kind of a curved triangle. And it's going to connect down to the bottom. So I can go backwards and forwards with this steps again, I guess. I go backwards and forwards for you. Okay, here we go forward. And then we want like this here. And then we did our little triangle up here too.
Okay, now I'm going to erase, I have a little bit of this curve left in the base of the beak from that little circle I drew for his head. I'm going to erase just a little bit of that right here. Oops, I'm kicking it again. Sorry, guys. Now I'm going to blend this part of his head with that triangle so it looks more like that feathery tuft that it is. By blending, I mean, I'm just going to make a little strokes to smooth it together and erasing what I don't like. So I'm making a little soft, almost like long letter C strokes like feathers to soften that. And then I'm going to erase that oval. Mm -hmm. He's getting there. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make this softer and sketchier and play with it a little bit. So I get how I like it. I put his little eyeball in the back end of this, this triangle up here, the upper triangle, this eyeball will go back in here. So if you, if you made that all black, you could erase it, or if you just shaded it, or if you had white out, you'd white, out, white it out. Uh, make a white oval and then put a black oval in the middle with a little white dot in it. I'll get that closer. It looks like it'd be hard to see. Mm -hmm. Put his eye. Oh, I could just make it bigger. I need to get used to that. Just make it bigger like this. There we go. That's what I did with his eye. Mm. I need to start making myself do that instead of physically picking up the thing. See, that's, that's my learning curve here. I'm, I'll get better mm -hmm. at making that a habit the more I teach doing it this way. So a little big. That's me practicing. <laughs> Pitching and zooming. Okay. So I have a group of our teacher friends. This is just a little tangent that wants to meet on Zoom and they don't know how to do it. And one was really confused and then they only have the three things for 40 minutes. And I paid for the professional app because I want to use it in my little side business and stuff. So I get to do a new thing. Tomorrow I'm going to set up a meeting for the future for my art teacher friends that are retired and invite people. Mm. So if I have any questions, I'll email Jennifer. Huh. <laughs> if, I get, if I get stuck. Hopefully I'll, I'll be able to figure it out and do it by myself. But see, it's, it's good for us old folks to learn this new technology. It's, it comes <laughs> in handy, it's fun. Hmm. She, I just learned how to do digital art and get decent at it a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. I still can't remember where I put my glasses most of the time. I was hoping it would help with that type of memory, but no. <laughs> oh, well. Can't have everything. I'm happy to be here and be kicking. Yes. Okay, so now to make him look a little bit more birdie-like, I'm going to mess with this beak a little bit. I'm going to make like a bottom part of the beak and maybe a line that comes up like that. So maybe he'll be open, be able to open his mouth and eat at some point. Mm -hmm. See that? Or we don't have to make him frowning. We can make it happy. <laughs> He looks mad there. You can make him however you want to. I can do it straighter. Now he's happier. Now he looks like a parrot. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> in the picture, they show that line more in the middle. So I'm going to erase that. You can make it really light. Whatever. I'm going to make it light. There we go. Flamingo might be fun, too. Maybe y'all got me obsessed with birds. I'm thinking about all different types of birds. I think that um, 
my beak, I want it fatter down there. So I'm gonna make this a little wider, make that darker, see if I like the way that looks better. Yeah, I think I like the fatter beak better. Okay, the second will make that body look a little bit better. So I should outline that beak so you can see it better too. Okay, now for the body. I'm gonna bring this belly part out, make it a little fatter right here. Make it fluffier, not so ellipse-like and geometric, but softer like a bird. Textury sketch marks. Bring the belly out further and go back in. I could do the same thing with this shape here. Get less perfect ellipsy circle, geometric like, and fluff them up. And really, this line doesn't really need to be here. That could be shadow later. I'm going to erase that. You can leave it there if you want, but it doesn't really need to be there. It just helped us get the shapes in order. Now we're going to do another oval down here that kind of overlaps that little oval in the body and this is where it's his uh, feathers going to be coming into play. So once you have like the basic shape of that feather you know, where it's going to go that you like. Once again, you can erase the oval. And start to play with more textures and feathery like shapes by the sketchiness and the marks that you make. Sometimes feathers have tears to them, like there's a little scalloped edge in there. Then there's another section and another section. Look at his tail feather and stuff here in a minute. I'm going to move him over here a little bit. Joan, excuse me. This is Jackie. I have to go ahead and leave. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, you're so welcome. Thanks for joining us. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. So somewhere down around here, I'm going to have his tail feather flare out. Notice I made the curve and not a straight line. Um, most things in nature are curved. <clears throat> Very few things are rectilinear. I'm going to try to do like a curve line here and a line out there. That's where his tail feathers are going to be. I think I'm going to have him holding on to a branch. So close to the back end of his belly, I'm going to put a curved line. And then further up here towards the top of his belly, but not near his neck, I'm going to put another curved line. Then to make this look more like little feet hanging on, I'm going to do curved shapes like this, like little curved triangles instead of lines. That. You can see that. I'll just make it big this way. Like that. Hmm. Like 
this. Make it a really nice curve. Make it really look like it's hold on to the branch we're about to draw. And then I'm going to put a branch. It's going to line up at an angle. But to me, the feet look like they would be holding on to it. And this might not be right the first time. I might have to play with it and make it come out on this side too. Let's see. Let's try it again like this. There you go here. Pretend it's going through. Go here. Pretend it's going through. Go here. Some more claws in there. I can make the branch stop. I can make it extend off the page. That would be a nicer composition. I could draw little branches that come forth from it to give it more interest in the whole picture. If you want to use branches to come off of it, think of them like check marks or a letter V. Here's a letter V off of this section, and then erase where that letter V connects. It's like a letter V. There could be another letter V coming off this section. And you could go on forever like that. Mm -hmm. And that makes it look more like nature than just a stick together. If you make them really spindly and curvy at the end, that makes it look even more natural. Mm. And then you can do that all over. You can decide where you want to do that in the composition. I'm going to do one off of here. I'll literally spread this one out like letter V this way. This one kind of looks like it's broken. There's another letter V or a check mark. Spread that like open a little bit and then another letter V or a check mark. It's actually, I had a math teacher, a fourth grade that liked to draw. And she's the one who taught me to do them when she saw me drawing trees one day. Because I didn't have art in elementary school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What a shame. Yeah. She told me this little check mark letter V method. It was awesome. Thank you, Mrs. Mudgett, <laughs> math teacher, fourth grade. <laughs> she saw my interest and she capitalized on it. And that was awesome. Not only for being kind, but for building a relationship with a student. Okay, here's a little thing I'm gonna show you about line quality. To give things depth, you can make certain parts of line darker. Like this side, of the branches down lower so it will receive less light than the upper part. So I'm going to make the bottom part of this line thicker. Mm -hmm. And then maybe where we have our letter V's make them thicker and then get the line get a little thinner and thicker and a little thinner. See how that adds depth? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. Like a nice pen and ink drawing. <laughs> Just put them in, in strategic places, places where you think it's going to be dark. Mm -hmm. Things that will receive less light. But not everywhere. See, I did it, I did it here too. Yeah. If you vary the line quality between thick and thin, that makes it look more professional and artistic. Mm. Like this line up here, I might make that a little bit thinner because it's towards the top of the bird. Mm that would receive more light and make it more delicate, not as heavy. And this line down here, since it would be in shadow anyway, make it thicker. Whoops. Look how much that adds to the drawing already, having some thick lines and thin lines. Um, I, I, I didn't do it to talk about it, but on the beak I did that. I made these lines out, this line thicker and this inner line thinner. Mm. Now, 
if you were an artist and you were to look at this as composition, unless you put some maybe watercolor washes up here for sky or something, it's kind of empty right now. And it's, not every space has to be filled, but it's a judgment call of the artist. Does it look done? There's a variety of things you could do. Like I could do some shapes where I could have leaves up here. It's just little puffy lines to make it look more finished. I could do more branches and draw little leaf forms coming off them, but I can make the leaf forms very, very simplified. That's kind of thing, what I think I want to do. So I'm going to do some more branches, like there's trees behind them. And if you come across diagonally in a picture plane, that actually gives it more movement and interest. It makes it less boring. Our eyes see movement when things are diagonal. When you make lines that are horizontal, they feel at rest. Then vertical, you see slight movement. But diagonal makes movement. And if I go diagonal underneath him and go here, it, it visually helps tie the picture together, too. So I don't have to fill the whole thing of branches. I can just pick a, pick a few places. OK, I'm going to make this darker here. When I talk about the line quality, darker next to him and lighter in between. Make it darker down here, darker in this little bent. Fade out the lighter. Some more line work here. Now for like the feeling of leaves, you wouldn't have to necessarily draw every little leaf. This is a, I'm still working on branches here, sorry. I confuse you. You can draw the impression of shapes that kind of look like a leaf. So I could draw little puffy things that almost look like clouds, or I could draw little tiny leaf shapes if I really want to. Or you just get the impression by doing something like this, that from far away will read like a leaf. And you don't have to put leaves everywhere. You could put leaves in a few places where you think it, it needed in the space or you think it will look good. I think there needs to be one here. So we've gone from a cartoon bird to something that's starting to look like a finished, more of an advanced artist pen and ink drawing. Mm -hmm. From circles and ovals to things that are looking, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit more advanced than just circles and ovals. I mean, it looks a lot more um, artistic than, you know, a circle with a couple sticks coming out for the legs and another circle for the head. Mm. Cool. We can pretend we're not doing color. I'm just gonna shade this like I'm doing pen and ink. With the, you could do this with pencil too, this type of shading. Later, you can add color, you know, more leaves, take stuff out that you don't like. It's just, it's all a process. It helps if you're looking at something and you're not sure if you like it or not. Like if you want to do something special as a gift for somebody or whatever, or just for yourself. I do this all the time. I just do work for myself. Leave it alone for a while and then come back and look at it. You'll see it differently. I know it sounds ridiculous because it's the same things, but our brains do weird things to our eyes and it's just, your brains get tired. Like cognitive um, exhaustion. <laughs> so it's like it's good to leave things alone for a while and then come back and look at them. You'll see things totally different. You'll see things that you didn't see before. Just like when you edit a paper yep. or anything like that. That's funny how I look at something maybe an hour or two later, I'm like, man, I didn't even see that there. So if I'm doing some artwork for a client, I definitely 
try to do something and then I, oh, I like to have a deadline far enough ahead so I can have that option to go back and look at it and set it aside for a minute or two. Um, but yeah, I try to make sure I do that before I get something to a client. Of course, if I miss something, then I just have to fix it for them. But you know, it's. There's a type of shading called hatching a cross hatching that's done with lines. Hatching is just lines that are close to each other and then further apart. And cross hatching is when you make like little marks over them. Make it look more textured, like I just did some on that beak. Because mm. mm -hmm. that bottom part of the beak is below the top, so we get some shading. And if you're not really sure where shading should be, look at photograph references. I do that all the time. Mm. It's like you don't get a feel for where shading might be from where the light comes to, until you practice a lot, like to be able to do it out of your head. And there's still lots of things I can't do it out of my head with. But if you look at photo references or take photos in nature, I love to take photographs and look at your own photographs, different types of light on them. You can see where the darks and lights are. Another way of, sh of shading is called stippling, where you do dots with pen and ink. Do mm -hmm. dots closer together. And then spread them out as you go out. Slowly spread them out, vary it little by little, and then that will look like a shaded area as well. And all these little types of shading, if you're doing pen and ink work, or you can do it with pencil or marker or anything, really. And just with a ballpoint pen. I used to do it in school all the time when I was bored taking notes. Shame on me. But anyway, <laughs> it, it takes forever and it's relaxing. Mm. So if you're having an anxious or tense moment and you find a picture to sketch, and you decide you're going to do the methods of cross hatching, you know, making lines across each other for shading, hatching or stippling after you get your basic drawing done. It will take forever and it is so calming. Mm. And, you know, you could even play music while you're working on that type of drawing. Like sometimes if I'm concentrating, something takes a lot of technique. I don't turn music on right away because I need to focus. But after you get to a certain point in certain parts of your project, you can just turn on music. Like I could stipple forever like this. I'm using my left hand now because my right hand's tired. I've taught myself how to use both hands because the carpal tunnel thing. Can you see how it's, it, look how it's starting to look at more interesting now with the little dots here and the cross hatching there. And parts of the lines that are darker and thicker and parts are thinner. Mm. Starting to look like something. I think I will Draw a heavier line underneath his leg and foot here to make it look like that has more of a shadow. I think this one needs another claw. That looks weird. This one needs to have a point coming down and around. I think I'm going to go back to stippling. I'm going to stipple dots in the letter V's of my branches really close together in the depth of the letter V. 
and then lighter as I go out from the letter V. That's going to add darkness and lightness. It'll make it look like it has some depth in our background. And it also adds texture because it's a little bit different than the lines that we drew. Joan, could you show the stippling a little closer up so I get yeah. the effect of the... Here's a stippling oh, section. Okay, I see. Oh. Yeah. And yay for me for making it big and not trying to actually physically lift it up and put it into the camera. <laughs> <laughs> That's a habit I've got to... I'm used to zooming and pinching when I instruct here, doing it this way. Okay. Same thing if I ever do live caricature parties. So far, I haven't had a customer that, want, that wants a live caricature party yet, but I have had some other commissions. Um, but eventually, you never know. There might, want be, might be someone who wants to hire me for a live Zoom caricature event. So the more I do this, the better I get. So see, you guys are helping me too. Mm -hmm. To get used to this. Stippling represent? Pardon? What does the stippling represent? Um, dark and light areas. Shadow. Like when I pull it back, it just looks like a, there could be a shadow or a little dark place in between the branches there. Hmm. And that's just the impression of saying, what is that dark place? Could it be a bunch of little gnats or bugs? It could. Could it be shadows of, um, plants could it be something on the ground could it be it could be whatever you want it to be it's just a way to shade like i could shade in his beak instead of doing the hatching and cross hatching i'll erase the hatching and cross hatching i'll do that with stippling instead and it gives the same effect it's going to give dimension and depth to an otherwise flat, plain thing. It'll be darker towards the recesses of the beak, the dots, and closer together. Let's see? Mm -hmm. uh, and further apart as they come out, away from the corner part of it. Oh, and another thing too, if, if you're aging and your hands are hurting, you know, we're all getting older, that's why I switch back and forth between hands because I've taught myself to do that. Another really cool thing to do is you can order grips, like grips that are used for um, handicapped kids or that are used for just for younger hands that are bigger and clumsier. I don't have one on this eye pencil. I have one on my other eye pencil, but a grip helps you if you're, do you know what I mean by grip? They slide on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a tool we can use as our hands age. Because I don't know about you, but I'm not giving up on art. I'm going to do it as long as I can. Yes. So it's very soothing for me. So I'm going to use whatever modifications I can. I've even, I don't know if I told you this or not. I even I even um, tried doing it with my feet. Oh. Yeah, I have video. It's crazy. Put a paintbrush or marker or something in between my toes just for something different to do. It's got to be good exercise for your brain. Anytime you stimulate your brain doing a new task, mm -hmm. it helps your brain cells grow. Plus, there's a novelty to it. It's something to do, ridiculous and fun. So huh. they're stippling on the beak to get the shadow instead of the cross hatching. It's a different type of texture. Now you might like cross hatching better on the beak and stippling for the background. Mm-hmm. You know, I think I like, actually, I like the cross hatching better on the beak than the yeah. step line. Yeah. I'm going to put that back on there. Mm -hmm. Backwards with the iPad. It's so easy to do sometimes. I'll figure it out. My fingers get tired. Back. I'm getting impatient. It's going to take too long. I'm just going to get rid of some of the stipples and put the cross hatching back in there by hand and not just go back with the program because I'm too impatient. Drive me crazy. I can combine them, really. You could. Why not? Kinds of works. What the heck? That's what art's all about, you know? Doing your own thing, finding your own way. Just learning the tools and how to use them and then finding your own way with them.
Once you learn a technique like stippling or or varying the line quality of a line, thick and thin, mm. you can use it however you want. Well, look, it's that time. It is. Thank you, Joan. You're Just... so welcome. So are there any questions at this time? I guess um, if Jennifer wants to stop recording and we can do a question and answer thing.